Hi, welcome back to the second video of my uh, Security Plus series. Uh, let me X that out. So what we're going to be doing in this one is uh, doing firewalls and evasion, a few exercises built around that. Now for, for our first exercise, we're just going to be connecting to the Hyper-V manager. Uh, now, uh, just, just going to involve connecting to the virtual machines, uh, but we'll be using Hyper-V to connect to, uh, to another server uh, to use the, the OS. So now we're just going to make sure we're connected to the proper VM, which I believe is the DM1 here. Just a moment. Just thought I had it queued up. Okay. <clears throat> Perfect. All right. So, yeah, let's shoot. X that out here. All right, perfect. So now I'm just going to open up the Hyper V Manager application. There it is. All right. And then I'm going to click on, let's see, here, I'm going to right click, start, then connect. And you don't have to do it or right click, I just right click myself. It seems like it's a bit quicker, but you can also right click, well, you can do this. Uh, any other the prompts that I'm doing, you can also do it on the side here. So I'm also going to connect. Uh, so now we're connecting to the other lab um, here. All right, perfect. So now we're just going to go in as the admin. All right, perfect. And now I should be on the virtual machine window. All right, perfect. So I can actually do that there just so I can, I like to see everything full full uh, screen mode. All right, perfect. So now this now this allows us to move on to our next uh, step here. We're just gonna install zone alarm, firewall and antivirus. Now, uh, we, we touched on firewall for multiple videos, right? And just one more time, uh, we wanna understand that the firewall is the device that prevents unauthorized access to a host or network, either from within the corporate uh, environment or coming from the public network like the internet, right? So generally there are two types of firewalls. And uh, the hardware firewall takes the form of a closed proprietary, uh, proprietary appliance uh, with its own OS. And this is considered faster, um, however a bit expensive. Now a software firewall is installed on a computer and it actually utilizes the computer's OS. And firewalls do the hardware or software, they use rules to filter incoming and outcoming uh, traffic to the network. So what we're gonna do now is install a software-based firewall called uh, Zone Alarm uh, Free Firewall. So it's a lightweight version of the so uh, Zone Alarm Pro uh, with, because it has additional features with the Pro uh, and capabilities just not found on a free version naturally, of course, right? So uh, we can you know, choose to evaluate both versions and find out uh, uh, in another video possibly if they meet our requirements, right? So uh, first, just gonna download and install the free, um, free firewall, the zone alarm, right? So now that we've connected to, let's see, now that we've connected to this um, server here, I got lost for a second, just gonna go to Internet Explorer, open it up. And then it should automatically connect. And then we're going to go to tools and hacking tools. Perfect. And then it should be ZAF W setup. Set up I need. I think this should be this one. No, it's this one. And of course, we want to hit save. <clears throat> okay, and then we want to write. Yes. Now it's doing its thing. Um, default settings. I guess it's just. The 
three here. Perfect. All right, so I'm just going to let it do its thing, wait for the setup to finish and take too long. Perfect, so it has finished uh, the install, right? All right, naturally it'll show, yeah, it'll show they cannot display web page, which, which is fine. But we're just gonna perform now the main install of the, the zone alarm, right? So um, I'm just gonna put manage add-ons here, all right. All right. Um, minimize this, right? All right, perfect. So we just want to make sure that this is enabled. All right, perfect. And then now it should allow us to, to close this out. And then refresh. <clears throat> Let really me see this here. Okay, now just going to, um, now that we've enabled the zone alarm, do not track for the IE. Now we're going to uninstall the AVG antivirus that we already have um, on this uh, server. So, uh, so I won't interfere. So I'm just going to go to the control panel. Uh, let's see here. Uninstall program. APG. Install. Next. Perfect. So now it's removing. And we also have to restart up it's removed as well. All right, so the uninstaller has officially finished. So now I'm just going to restart now here. And close all of this out. So I'm just going to restart. All right, perfect. So we've successfully restarted the computer to fully uninstall AVG. Uh, antivirus, right? So now we have zone alarm. Now what we're going to do is just do the. Uh, we're just going to make sure we have the uh, the zone alarm antivirus installed now, right? So uh, we have zone alarm here. So now we want the antivirus installed. Perfect. Of course, yes. <clears throat> there it is. Okay. Perfect. And I'm just waiting for it to finish. All right, perfect. So it has successfully downloaded the antivirus. So now we're going to do just a bit of configuring uh, for the zone alarm uh, because it's, it's an essential portion of the process to make sure that definitions of the database and an understanding of the program features uh, is clarified to the user in general, right? So uh, now that this completed, going to click a uh, few details for the antivirus section and then we should see the real-time protection uh yeah uh, let's see it's enabled perfect so now we can also schedule a scan and configure settings so i'm just going to click the firewall tab and we can also notice that the basic firewall and application controls are enabled as well i'm going to take a look at the identity and data and you can also see that we can um, uh, see the under the identity and data that uh, we can have a few additional settings here. So just going to click uh, settings for the protection and then activate and manage for the protection service. Okay. Yes. No. Right. Okay. 
and um, try it again. It may not load since we're in a in a lab. Let's see. Okay, yeah, it's not loaded for us because we're we're in the lab uh, platform. So, but we can normally use this page to learn how to use identity card, which is fine uh, as far as the real world. Um, but so now we're just going to confirm uh, <laughs> configure Zone Alarm to use a a, uh, a proxy server. So to confer to configure this uh, to use the proxy server, it's going to do a few things here. We're just going to uh, head over to Tools and Preferences. Let's start it. There it is. Okay, perfect. So now on the now that we have the dialog box for our preferences here, under the proxy configuration, we just want to enable the uh, proxy server and we want to do proxy with a let type. There we go. And then eighty eighty for the. Let's see. Perfect. All right, and now we're just going to do a full scan. Now to do the full scan, we're just going to make sure we're back on the antivirus tab, setting it on and then clicking scan now. Let's see, full scan. All right, perfecto. So now uh, we can choose the full scan uh, or as you can see the other two options that we have there, but we want to do a full scan. It may take around between six to 10 minutes to complete normally. And then it may or may not show us a few detectors. If it does, we'll, we'll peer through them to see, see what, it's look, what it looks like as far as the, the scan. But uh, I would suspect that it may be no viruses uh, may be detected. Uh, we don't know <laughs> we're gonna find out in just a moment. All right, so now that we see that the, uh, the Scan has been completed, took a, just under 10 minutes. No infections were found, so we are officially good to go. So just gonna close out this window here. And now we're gonna be working with uh, zone alarm logs, excuse me. Now to view the logs, uh, we're just gonna go back to the tools section, right? And then we're going to do logs here. All right, now the zone alarm, uh, alerts and logs uh, dialog box here. It, it, in the viewer tab, it'll show us uh, the firewall log and outgoing connections that were blocked along with other details. So it's going to hit log control here. And on the log control, the log, the log archive frequency, the log archive, <laughs> the log archive locations have been automatically set. All right, so I'm just going to keep the default selections and then I'm just going to to alert events uh, to keep the train going. And we have the settings for different system events here. So I'm going to keep those at the default as well. It's going to hit here and I'm going to close out the window. And so it's going to click on start, and shut down. Let's see. And then just going to click on exit. All right, perfect. Now that we're back on the uh, the same Hyper Hyper V manager, so now it, this allows us to go into our next exercise, which is using anonymous proxy sites. Now, in a corporate network environment, uh, <clears throat> it implements strict security policies when it comes to using the internet, rightfully so, right? Because it could be non non work related websites, just you know, not productive towards. Uh, the enterprise, right, such as Facebook, amongst others, as far as social media platforms. Uh, however, you can use anonymous proxies or websites to bypass firewall. Anonymous proxies are just simple websites that allow you to feed into the URLs that what you really intend to visit. So these websites, they keep your information anonymous when you visit other websites. So uh, your IP address or anything is not revealed. I remember personally doing this. Uh, whenever we had gym or and there was an issue with the gym where it was being renovated and we had to spend some time in the computer lab versus actually having gym. 
and we would use proxy sites to be able to look at NBA highlights and things of that nature. It's like the early 2000s, right? And they had the firewall rules and we couldn't go directly to these websites. So we'd use proxies uh, to make sure that we were able to look at like Dwayne Wade or Vince Carter, like, like highlights, uh, I believe it was like ankle breaking mixing. I, for, I forgot the name of it, but anyway, I digress. Uh, but yeah, so what we're going to do first is uh, bypass block sites using anonymous websites. Um, <clears throat> and so for this task, we're just going to use one proxy site that's been specifically allowed on uh, these servers for the, the labs I'm currently using for the purpose of just carrying out this exercise. So just going to uh, minimize this here, open up Internet Explorer, <clears throat> and just going to go to, I'll type out the full, full address here. And that'll be that may not work. Okay, I have another another here. That's fine. Yeah, I'm another. I spelled that wrong. I've spelled a few things from just in case here. Okay, perfect. So it's just given us a list of different proxy sites that we can use. Uh, just an excessive list, right? Uh, they, most of them won't work in our practice lab because of the firewall policies that are enforced in, in this network. But we're just going to illustrate uh, a proxy site that, that's allowed in the lab, right? So I'm just going to go back to the original um, website that I wanted here. This should work this time. <clears throat> And it is Hmm. I'm showing it. Let me fix that here. Hmm. 